Welcome back to another review. I have a new charger in for testing today. It's the Mi Boxer or My Boxer C2 smart charger. Now this was supplied by the company for review, but I'll go over all the parts and processes of the charger so you can see how it stacks up. And looking at the front of the box here, just some pictures and some specs at the bottom. On the side you'll see you do get an included car charger and you see that at the start where all the items are laid out and on this side this lists out all of the battery types that it takes so it's listed 4.2 volt which is the 3.7 volt ones and a nickel metal hydride up to a D size not all chargers can take that on the back section this is a more detailed look at some of the features we've got overcharge protection it can count the capacity that's charged into the battery you have voltage activation for zero volt batteries it's using a delta v as well for nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium cells this is the included cable it's a proprietary barrel style connector and 80 centimeters long but it feels good quality uh, quite thick cabling with a slight rubbery feel to it this is the included car adapter and that goes up to two amps as the charger is USB powered that's uh, something which could be useful for traveling looking at the charger itself you'll notice that it isn't a particularly small charger um, even compared to my hands I'll compare it to another charger shortly but it is well made it has very dense plastics metal sliders it does feel very solid in the hand and with good case quality as well so there's nothing been skimped in terms of the build quality and features on that side of things Zooming in a bit on the back, you can see some ventilation slots and you have four silicone pads. And I'll zoom in a bit closer onto the specs, you'll see the uh, safety features stamped there as well as the battery uh, types that it supports. Again, this is the barrel style connector. I would personally have gone with a micro USB or type C. I'm just turning it around to show you what's on the case on the other side. It's nothing to see there, but you can see it's a fairly large unit. You do have raised points on the contact areas and they're quite sturdy the rails as well they don't have any play much in them at all you can see there's slight raised contact points on those as well. Now you'll notice that the bays are wide and that's because it can take the D cells and not all of these chargers can a lot will only go up to the C type ones so I've got it next to the Xstar VC2 Plus Master I also did a review on that recently you can see there's quite a substantial size difference the Xstar is quite a lot smaller um, but there are some potential advantages and disadvantages to both that has a USB uh, power bank function on the Xstar which is quite useful so you can put a lithium cell in and use it as a power bank now the cable from the x staff actually fits into the C2, it's the same size so it does actually work as well when you plug it in but for some interesting reason if you try and plug in the C2 cable into the x star it doesn't fit so you might want to look at the x star if you need a replacement cable. The manual is pretty good, it's um, got some translation errors and it's perhaps a bit long winded but it does go over everything in quite a bit of detail including the display and the functions because this is a fully automatic charger you don't really have a lot of control but it does explain things quite in depth this section goes over sort of frequently asked questions or potential problems it could be a bit shorter and I think the translation needs a bit of work but it does get the job done you can certainly work through it quite easily because this is powered via USB, you have to bear in mind that you will need a fast charge port. The one that I had it plugged into, the red one is, and the black ones are the slower one amp. And the computer ports and things like that, some of them are half an amp. So bear that in mind if you are going to want to use the fast charging, you will need a high power USB port. Bays are actually slightly taller than the X-Star as well, which is another bonus. Now, as soon as you put a cell in, it will detect whether or not it's uh, lithium or a nickel metal hydride or cadmium and it will give you a percentage readout it will test the resistance and it will give you an estimation of the time remaining this is pretty much fully charged this cell so there's not going to be much of a charge going into this but what I'm going to do is test a lot of different cells with this charger and I've put literally dozens through it in the last 10 days that I've had the unit once you put another cell in it will automatically move over to the other channel so you only get detailed information on one channel you just use that button to transfer between the two switch between the two for the more detailed breakdown I'm putting a large 26650 cell into this and it's telling me it's 6% charged and you'll see the capacity rating um, 
start to count into it as well. There's an option to continuously count or just for the single cell. Pay attention to the charging rate on the right hand side there. It rotates through the um, resistance and then onto the voltage and then it goes back to the charging rate. You see it's up to 1.35. It always starts off with a fairly slow charge of around about 100 milliamps. It's moved up to 1.4. And then up to the 1.5 amps that's the maximum speed that you can get from the charger is 1.5 amps um, per channel but obviously if you have 2.1 amps you won't be able to get that for both channels now you can see i've put uh, another lithium cell in on the left here and it's going to have to split the current between the two so there isn't any way to determine um, what it's going to pick sometimes it tends to share the current more evenly and other times it might favor a larger capacity cell. So you can't manually go in and say, I want to charge uh, bay one at one amp or half an amp. With the X star, which I'm showing you here, um, you just have an option for half an amp or one amp charging, but that's on both of the bays. You can't actually specify individually. So that gives you some control, which you don't have on the C2. Because this is fully automatic, and the fact that you can't adjust the charge rate manually means that it has to be able to detect smaller capacity cells which don't want to have a large charge. So what I've done is put in a much smaller uh, 18350 lithium cell to see what that charge is at. And I spent a lot of time trying to trick the charger over the last sort of 10 days that I've had it. And it's giving a charge rate of uh, 450 milliamps, which is a good charge for a cell of that capacity. That would be around about eight 900 uh, milliamps capacity so you don't want to be put putting uh, 1.5 amps or an amp charge into that how it does that i'm not exactly sure whether it's got some uh, sensors on the rail so it can detect smaller cells it seems to work off of as well the resistance so if it detects somewhat higher resistance in cells it will reduce the charging rate and uh, that will reverse that for low resistance cells now I'm inserting a high capacity AAA nickel metal hydride battery. This is a Sony one and it's uh, around about 1000 milliamps an hour capacity. Now, as with all of the batteries that you put into the charger, it starts off quite low and pay attention to the resistance because that changes over time. So it might take a while to actually um, fully read that accurately. But I got a similar charge rate for that type of cell, which is again about ideal for that particular one you can see a close-up on the AA cell that I have in and it's giving a charge rate of 0.65 amp now I have a couple of poor quality batteries these have been used extensively um, for many years now perhaps seven or eight years and it's not so much the age but it's the times that they've been recharged and you'll see very high resistance for both cells if you start to see four five six hundred plus on the milliohms that will indicate that the cells are quite worn and you'll also have a very slow charging on those cells and the capacity won't be anywhere near the stated original capacity. So if it detects high resistance in cells, it really does ramp down the charging speed so it will charge them very slowly. That's a good warning sign that the cells are worn out and will need to be recycled. So I ran it through my capacity test and you can see that the 2,500 and 2,000, they're well below their original capacity, so they are quite worn. Now just to test to see the reverse polarity protection, if you insert a cell the wrong way around and you get the error code come up. So this is a very safe charger to use. Uh, can't really make any mistakes, be it with different types of cells that you put in. One thing I did notice though, sometimes the charging rate isn't always the same. This is a high capacity Olight lithium cell with 1.2 amps charging speed. Then I moved it over to the left bay, exactly the same cell. And for some reason it was giving a very slightly higher charge rate. So I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, it's a shame that you can't adjust the current yourself manually. I've now got a couple of AAs charging. The charging speeds on those, I was getting up to around about uh, 700 milliamps. There is potential to charge those a bit quicker, up to about an amp for a high capacity AA. Both of these, you can turn the display off or it will auto dim itself, so that's not an issue. 
They're both easy to use chargers. The C2 does really cry out for manual settings though. That would be quite useful and it's showing you the full here when it's done and it completely cuts the current when it's full. There's no trickle charge on this at all. So that is an improvement over the C4 model. I'm very happy with the charge quality and termination. Also noted that the um, power draw was a bit less than the indicated so you can see 1.45 and 1.5 amps but it's a bit lower than that in real world so that's perhaps slightly inaccurate though the voltage readings seem very accurate so summary on this one i like this charger perhaps quite a bit more than the c4 but it doesn't have all of the features what it does have is automatic charging that's very safe you also get a, a good long warranty you get an included car charger and the display is much better than the x-star charger it's much more informative and useful downsides for me would be the lack of control over charging speeds i really would like to see that the proprietary tip for the uh, cable also would change that myself and I also think that it could benefit from possibly having a discharge and capacity test. It's also not the smallest charger around, but there are more positives to this, particularly if you want a very easy to use charger that's fully automatic and very safe to use, very good quality charging overall with this. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe where I'll be looking at more chargers and other similar products in future videos.